Hello and welcome to another video. In this one we're going to be talking about a doc test, what that is and how you can write and run doc tests and why I don't really like them, but <laughs> we'll save that for the end. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so we are going to pretend to write a function today. It's going to be a very, very simple function. Uh, how about squaring? That's That's an easy function to write and test. And I don't know, we take a float and return a float and uh, return x times x. Very, very simple function. Now, the way you might test this traditionally is you might, you know, pytest mark dot parameterize and have, you know, uh, n and expected and, you know, do a set of table tests for like zero is zero and Five is 25. Anyway, it's, it's not really like a really interesting problem, but <laughs> test square and expected assert square and equals expected. But this might be how you write, you know, a traditional PyTest based test. And of course you would import PyTest if you wanted to do this. And if we set up our virtual environment and run PyTest on this file. But of course this is not what this video is about. Oh, there's a syntax here. Where's my syntax error? Oh, parentheses. Yeah, there we go. So this video is not, not about writing traditional tests, but this is how you would write a traditional test. Now what doc tests are is they kind of take a terminal output. So if you were to you know, run Python 3-i with this, and you were to run square of five, you'll get 25 back, you run square of zero, if we just wanted to take these two tests, for instance, you kind of get this output that looks like you typed this at a terminal. And if you were to copy and paste this and put this into a doc string, I don't know, where's the input? And put this in here and indent it properly. So your, your code is somewhat self-documenting here in that it has a, a little example, or well, two examples of how the doc test, or the, <laughs> the, the code executes. Uh, and if you were to run PyTest on this, it's not actually going to do anything. It's not gonna discover these by default. You have to opt into doc tests. And actually, there's a standard library doc test module. I think this works. No. Uh, uh, how does this work? Dash f. Dash f t dot uh, pi. Is it running it? I don't know. Oh, there we go. Okay, it is running it. It just is very quiet by default. Um, and so the doc test module can be used by default to run these document tests. Um, and it, it basically spins up an interpreter, runs some stuff, and then, uh, you know, stores it back in. And uh, PyTest can run these as well if you use dash dash doc test modules, I think it is. Yeah. And you can see that PyTest will run t.square, which is this particular function and it'll run all of the examples in there. Now it doesn't split these apart, so it'll just run this as one example. Uh, whereas you can see like doc test itself treated this as two separate examples. Um, just kind of minor details there, but that works fairly well. Now I do want to show you a few tricks with doc test because it can be a little bit fiddly. Um, so there are a few things that are useful. One is skipping things. Uh, Oh, where is the thing? Uh, oh, okay, so there are doc test directives. One of them is skip. So if you put a comment that's doc test colon skip, so if you do doc test skip here and rerun the uh, invalid option skip. Have I forgotten how this works? <laughs> doc test skip. Why am I skip the entire, well, we don't want to skip the entire block. Plus skip, oh, that's what it is. That's right. Okay, so now if we run this, you'll see that it has skipped this second example. So it has only run this first example. So this is a way that you can put uh, you know, documentation in your code, but it doesn't actually run. And you might want to do this if your function has unnecessary side effects or you need to set up stuff for it or, you have traditional tests that cover that behavior, you might skip it just on the doc test. 
Uh, like one example might be if you need to spin up a database, like you're not going to be able to, or you're, you're not going to write the code to spin up a database in your particular function. So you, you might demonstrate how it works using the, the doc string, but you don't actually want to run the doc test on that. So this is a way to skip that. Uh, there's also doc test ellipsis, which is a way to kind of partially match something. Ellipsis. Uh, yeah, you, so you can put like triple dots in here and that will avoid matching those particular dots there. So like, you know, this would have displayed a memory address, but you don't, you don't really care about it displaying the exact memory address and you can't reproducibly show the same memory address. You might uh, skip particular parts of your output. Another little trick, and this is not actually, you know, specific to doc test. Uh, this is a feature of the Python interpreter. I actually did a video on this, so I will link that in the description about the underscores. The underscore gets saved after each example. Um, so if I did, you know, square of underscore, it's 25 squared. <laughs> I should know that. <laughs> 625. Um, so underscore is the previous variable from the last run expression. So you can chain these. I think that works here. Yeah. Um, so you can see that, that that works as well. So you may also be able to reuse inter uh, like interactive interpreter things like underscore. But anyway, that's that's doc test. That's kind of how they work. That's how you can kind of skip as well as fuzzy match stuff and how you can run them in PyTest and stuff. Now we're on to the opinion part. <laughs> I think that documenting your functions is useful. I'm not going to debate that part. I think that writing and maintaining doc tests is a pain, mostly because you have to do all of this fiddly stuff to make it kind of work when you could write traditional tests that are both more expressive, easier to debug, lintable. You can run code coverage on them. Um, you can do all sorts of things that are basically impossible to do with document testing. And uh, I just... I just find them kind of a pain to deal with. Uh, there's also several different document testing frameworks, and they all treat doc tests slightly differently. So uh, at least PyTest and the standard library doc test are in line with how they execute, but uh, Sphinx has their own different doc testing framework that doesn't follow the same rules, which can be um, a little jarring and a little bit unfortunate. But anyway, my, my advice is if you're writing tests, stick to traditional tests. You're going to have better mileage and it's going to be much less frustrating. Um, and you can lint your code. Now, of course, there is some amount of linting that you can do with uh, doc tests. Like, for instance, uh, I wrote this thing called black and docs. Now, I don't use black myself, but <laughs> this was kind of one of those things where I was like, this would be a cool idea if I implemented it. And so I did. And one of the things that black and docs can do is it can take, um, you know, doc test examples like PyCon blocks and it can format them using black. So you can take these, you know, doc test examples and, and print them out. Oh, that's another thing that's really annoying is, uh, you know, the interactive interpreter has particular rules about line breaks and doc tests line break rules are actually different than the interactive interpreter. So writing the code in the interpreter and copy and pasting it over can be kind of fiddly as well. But anyway, that's doc test. Hopefully this is interesting. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.